Are you saved by His amazing grace? Aaron, if you could get me a key on amazing grace. I think we ought to sing His amazing grace. Pastor Adam can help me with that just a little bit because I need all the help I can get. Start it off. man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death but now I'm found Everybody, last verse. When we've been there. When we've been, when we've been there. Ten thousand years. years. He's helping somebody right now. Come on, somebody, just lift your hand and receive a breakthrough. Receive your miracle. Receive your turnaround. Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for grace. We thank you for breakthrough and turnaround. We thank you for healing and restoration. We thank you, Lord, that storms don't last forever. We thank you for the peace that passes all understanding, that keeps us, that gives us strength and grace. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. We'll bump somebody a fist bump and tell them you are in the right place today put your hands together for the band the praise team for pastor adam and olivia and this music that takes us into his presence amen praise god there may be some as good but there's no place you can go and find better well i thought i'd get more amen than that if we charged you $85 a ticket to get in, then you'd appreciate it a little bit more. <laughs> or 150. You know it's the truth. Some of y'all used to pay cover charge to get into the clubs y'all went in. And you didn't hear nothing like this anointed music. And you dance your fool head off and act like a fool and wake up the next morning with a hangover. You know it's the truth. And then you come to the Lord's house where the Bible says, 
Make a joyful shout unto the Lord. Dance before the Lord with all your might. And you just sit here and you patty cake a little bit. Have you ever been through a storm? Have you ever had to do something that you really didn't want to do? You didn't really want to go through it. You didn't really want to face it. Have you ever had to go through situations that you would have done anything else? Have you ever been anywhere in the middle of a crisis or a tragedy and you would have given everything you had if you could just be somewhere else? You've gone through those things and the only thing you could say about it, it was tough. It's tough. When you witness a tragedy, when it affects your family, it's tough. When you go through a divorce, and that's certainly not what you had in mind on the day that you said, I do. But you find yourself in the divorce court. You find yourself, the marriage is over. Tough moments, tough stuff. It's tough. When you find yourself deserted and it ends in divorce. When you find yourself facing the death of a loved one, it's tough. It's tough to lose somebody you love. It's tough to lose a family member of any kind. If you ever lost a child, it's backwards. They're supposed to bury us. We're not supposed to bury them. It's tough. If you ever had financial problems, I'm probably not talking to anybody here, but if you ever had financial problems and you didn't have enough money left at the end of the month, and it was tough. If it got so tough that maybe you lost your car, or maybe you lost your house, it's tough. If you didn't have enough money just for basic essential needs in life, you know what I'm talking about, it's tough. If your financial situation ever got to the point that the only answer seemed to be bankruptcy, it's tough. If you ever prayed and you felt like your prayer didn't go anywhere, your prayer didn't get up. Your prayer just went to the ceiling and bounced back down. And you wondered, God, where are you? Are you in Africa helping somebody over there? When I need you here, where are you, God? It's tough. I don't know if you've ever been through a storm that was so bad that all you could say is, it's tough. Somebody says, how are you doing today? You don't even lie and say, oh, everything's fine. Because that's what a lot of folks do. Oh, it's fine. A smile hides a lot of hurt. Am I talking to anybody? And somebody says, how are you today? The only thing you can say is, it's tough. I'm going through a tough time. I'm going through tough moments. The truth is, we've all been through some tough moments. We've all lived through some tough times. The truth is, there's some folks in this room today that you're going through some tough moments right now. If you could get out of them, you would. If you could have changed it, you would. If you could be anywhere else during the tough moments, you would be. And you don't know what to do. You've wrung your hands, you've prayed, you've called on friends, you've talked to folks. You've been to counselors. You've tried this and you've tried that. And all you can say is, I'm going through a tough time. It's tough. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes it's tough. I don't have time to cover all of the scenarios that we face in tough times. But I want to hit just a few to encourage you today. It's a tough time. It's tough. To love somebody that does not love you. 
especially when the relationship changed. They used to love you, or at least they act like they do. And then something shifts, and they tell you, I don't love you anymore. It's tough to love them. You know, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. He also said, pray for your enemies. Now, I know some of y'all, you don't get the translation and you pray for them. You pray that, because the Bible said, if you pray for your enemies, it'll heat coals of fire on their head. So you're praying, God, burn their brains out. Burn their brains out. That's not what he's talking about. I know it's tough when somebody's after you, when somebody has declared themselves as your enemy. I know it's tough, but the Bible says pray for them. The Bible says we are to love everybody. Mm. It's tough to love everybody. But you have to love everybody. Now, it didn't say you have to like everybody. It didn't. And there's some folks I just don't like. I love you, but I don't like you. <laughs> now don't look at me like you're so holy and self-righteous. Cause you love everybody, I hope, but there's some folks you don't like. There's some just not likable. <laughs> they need help, so pray for them. So they can be nicer and be more likable. I'm just telling you, I'm just being real. It's tough to love some folks. It's tough to love somebody that doesn't love you. They, they don't return the love. It's tough to love somebody when the relationship has been breached. But God wants us to love them. Romans 12, he said, don't just pretend that you love others. They'll see through it. Don't lie. People know if you're right. He said, don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. Yes. Look at your neighbor right now and say, I love you. <laughs> Look back at him and say, now, do you really mean that? <laughs> yes, I heard somebody say, yes. Yes, I love you. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong, the Bible says. Stand on the side of good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let me translate. Always do the right thing. You will never go wrong doing the right thing. Sometimes you have to grit your teeth, but do the right thing. Sometimes you have to go somewhere you really don't want to be. Do the right thing. Sometimes you have to say some things to somebody you wish you didn't have to say it, but do the right thing. If you will do the right thing, God will honor you and bless you for doing the right thing. It's tough to love somebody that doesn't love me back. Love them anyway. Love them with the love of Jesus. Don't pretend that you love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Stand on the side of good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Do the right thing. Yes. Amen? Yes. I know it's tough. Do it anyway. Here's a good one. It's tough to forgive those who have done me wrong. Anybody done you wrong? Quit cussing them and forgive them. Forgive them. Did you know that forgiveness is not for them? Forgiveness is for me. When I forgive somebody, it's not letting them off the hook. God will deal with them. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is for me. When you forgive them, it keeps them from living rent-free in your head. When you forgive them and release them, 
It cuts them loose. And you don't have to worry about it every day. Let it go. We're supposed to forgive. Well, I don't want to forgive. I want to dangle them over hell. Well, if you don't forgive them, God's not going to forgive you. He's dangling you over hell. Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, it says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Forgive him. And this translation says, drop the issue, let it go. Let it go. If I could sing like Olivia right now, I'd sing, let it go, let it go. Let it go. The Bible says, let it go. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Drop the issue. Look at your neighbor and say, drop it. Let it go. So that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions and your wrongdoings against him and others. If you want God to forgive you, you have to forgive others. You want to be healed? You got to forgive some folks. Some people, I believe, some people are never healed because they're bitter against somebody. They're holding a grudge against somebody that did something to you 29 years ago. Forgive them. Let it go. Now, just because you forgive somebody... It doesn't, you're going to love this. It doesn't mean you have to be back in relationship with them. There's some folks you, you don't need to be in relationship with. Because if they did you wrong once and twice and three times, they'll do it 79 times, 80 times, 81 times. So just because you forgive them, it doesn't mean you, the relationship will ever be restored or like it was. It may be. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be. And when you forgive them, it doesn't mean you have to be in relationship with them again. But if you don't forgive them, God won't forgive you. You have to forgive them. Let it go. And go forward. Because everything about you was built to go forward. Everything. It's tough, I know. It's tough to forgive those that have done you wrong. So, Pastor, you don't know what they did. You don't know how much money they stole from me. You don't know what they did. They, he took my wife. Mm -hmm. She went too. Forgive them both. Let them go. It's like the man that was riding down the road one day. He was going a little bit fast. The next thing you know, he noticed there was a trooper behind him. Blue light was flashing. And he started going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Blue light was following, the cop was flashing, the, the following, the siren was going, the lights were on. And finally the trooper spoke to him over the microphone, over his speaker, and he said, pull over! Finally the guy pulled over. He went up there and knocked on the window and he said, why did you, why did you leave? Why did you run away? He said, well, my wife ran off with the state trooper and I thought he was bringing her back. That was free. <laughs> Let it go. It's tough. It's tough to forgive those. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> it's tough to be a giver. When all I see is, is need, is lack, is poverty. The Bible says, oh, I'm supposed to tithe? Huh. How can I pay my tithe? I can't even pay my light bill. How can I pay my tithe? I can't put gas in my car to go to work. How can I pay my tithe? 
when I don't have enough money to buy the groceries I need. I can't buy formula for my baby. How can I pay tithe? Why would God want me to pay tithe when I can't even make the ends meet? Those are real scenarios. Those are tough moments that people live through. Single moms that really don't have enough money to buy milk. They can't buy formula for the baby. Come on, somebody. Y'all got quiet now. It's tough. It's tough moments. And God expects us to pay tithe and give an offering. That preacher gets up and talks about giving tithes and paying, paying tithes and giving offerings. All they want is my money. It's tough. How can I do it? How does God expect me to do it? I'm going to say this. Some of you won't even understand it. But I'm going to say it. God is not trying to get our money. He's not trying to get your money. He's not trying to get it from you. He is trying to get it to you. And he has given us the principle of sowing and reaping to put resources in our hands. It is a principle. It works just like putting seed in the ground for tomato plants. It works the same way. If you can get some tomato plants in the ground in a few weeks, you're going to have tomatoes and you can eat. If you can plant some cucumber and some squash, if you can plant some onions, if you can plant some green beans, if you can get some seeds in the ground, you're going to have some harvest in just a little while. We got several folks here in the church that make gardens every year and they bring us food. Thank you, Natasha. Several folks bring us food. I mean, she makes a good garden. I mean, it's gotten bigger and bigger. I think there's a greenhouse around it now. And I mean... Good stuff. But there would be no harvest if they didn't first put seed in the ground. The principle is you put seed in the ground and you get, you get food back. You get groceries back. You get vegetables back. But if you don't put seed in the ground, you get nothing. And the principle of sowing and reaping is one that God has given us to get resources into our hands. And it's tough. When finances are tough, it's, it's tough when you don't have enough money to pay the bills. I understand. But the Bible teaches us if you will pay your tithe first, 10%, then the 90% you have left will go further than the 100% by itself would have gone. I know it don't make sense mathematically for you mathematicians but I wonder if there's any tithers in the house that do this would raise your hands and as a testimony and say it works it works it works any tithers any tithers it works it does work when you sow a seed when you pay your tithe when you give he will give back to you good measure press down shaking together and running over will men give to your bosom the Bible says it works it works it works I couldn't make it without tithing I know that the reason I am blessed is because I'm a tither. I decided a long time ago, I watched my mom and dad when I was a little kid, and when I got an allowance of 50 cents a week, I used to tithe a nickel on that. That's where I started. And I have always tithed and I always will tithe. I've known sinners that weren't serving God, that weren't in church, but they would pay their tithe because they knew the principle of tithing works. There was a man that attended this church a few years. He was in and out of church, in and out of a relationship with God. But he paid $500 tithes every month. I mean, every Sunday, every time he was in the building. And I knew it sometime that he wasn't making that kind of money. And I asked him, I said, let me ask you something. I said, I've noticed that you're a faithful tithe. He said, yes, sir, I pay $500 every week. And he said, there are months that I don't make anywhere near that much money. He said, but when I do it, he said, God always makes it up. He always gives it back. He always blesses me. I've known other folks that they would make a lot of money, but they just put in a token. They tip God. Oh, y'all see how quiet it got right then? They would just tip God. 
I've known other folks, they would go on vacation and they wouldn't tithe that week because they weren't in church. Even though they made money, even though they got a salary. Did I say something wrong? Oh, it's quiet. It's tough to be a giver when all I see is lack. It's tough to be a giver when all I see is need. Let me bring it home. It's tough to be a giver when all I see is my need. When it's my need, when I'm broke, when I'm driving a 12-year-old car, a 15-year-old car with 250,000 miles on it, Pastor, you just don't understand. <laughs> I understand better than you think. You don't know my story. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the price I paid. You don't know how I got where I am today. Let me tell you, it was because I'm a tither. It's because I'm a sower. It's because I've been faithful. It's because the B-I-B-L-E is the word of God and it works. And when you, when you stand on the word of God and you live the word of God, God is faithful and he will bless you and he will give you abundance and he will bring increase into your life and he will heal your body and he will open doors for you and he will give you favor and he will take you to another level and he will give you another job or he will open a, a door for a new business for you. He will bless you more than you are deserving. That is the God that I serve. And all you have to do is follow the principles in the book and do what the Bible says and God will bless you and increase you and give you supernatural favor and you'll walk in good health and you will walk in increase. He's the God of the universe. But everybody says, oh, it's tough to be a tither. It's tough to give. Let me ask you something. If by some scenario, somebody came to you and says, we've decided to give you the Microsoft Corporation. Bill Gates now only owns about 1%. That 1%, I want to say it's something like, 330 million shares it's only 1% and that 1% is worth 20 billion 1% but somebody comes to you and says we're going to give you Microsoft there's one catch you have to give 10% of it back off the increase every week so you get it all, but you get to enjoy 90%, and 10% you have to give back. That is the principle of tithing. God says whatever you get, whatever you make, whatever you earn, it belongs to me, God says. It's all mine. The earth is mine, and everything in it is mine. And for letting you use it and be a steward... You get to keep 90%, but 10%, give it back. Now notice, he didn't say, I'm going to take it. He said, give it back. And if Microsoft did that, they said, just give it back, 10%. Are you going to be greedy and keep all the 100%? Yet people don't give that 10% tithe. They keep it all. I better move on. I better move on. Unless some of you other preachers want to preach right now and pick up where I left off. Look at your neighbor and say it's tough. Here's another good one. It is tough to receive correction. When I think I'm right. As a matter of fact, it's tough to receive correction anytime. How many of y'all just love correction? Wave at me if, you love, if that's you. Come on. Come on, I'm not taking an offer now. We move past that point. If, if you love to receive correction, wave at me. They ain't one hand. I'm not seeing one hand. 
Oh, there's one. There's one. Okay. You love to receive correction, especially when you think you're right. Hmm. My spiritual father used to correct me. He's gone to glory now. And he would correct me a lot of times, me and Pastor Rita, when we didn't think we needed it. But I always took it right here on, on the chin. You can ask Pastor O. I took it right here on the chin. And there were times that he corrected me and I'd just bite my tongue. And I honored the office of my spiritual father. I honored the office of him being over me in the Lord. I was submitted to his authority. And so I listened to what he said. And even if I didn't agree, I took the correction. Yes, sir. I submitted to the authority. And I always did my very bit best to, to follow the instruction and the direction that he gave me. And because of that, God blessed me. As a matter of fact, when we planted this church, I went to him, told him what I was going to do. And I said, but if you don't believe that God is in it, if you cannot bless me in doing this endeavor, then I won't do it. And I was sincere. And I wouldn't have. But he did. But he, he had no trouble speaking right into the mic. And he had this big, booming, bass voice, deep voice. And he would say, boy. He called me boy sometimes. Boy. And he would... He would speak very plain into the mic. And I would just take it on the chin. I would take my legs. The other side of that coin is there probably some times that he needed to speak into the mic. There were some times he needed to correct me. He needed to talk to me. And I ducked it. I got out. I, I didn't get what I deserved. There were times I got what I deserved, but there were times that I probably didn't get what I deserved. But it's tough to receive correction when I think I'm right. And somebody's wanting to tell me, you're wrong. There's a Bible verse. Here's what it says. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me translate that. We all need somebody in our life who sees what we don't see. And when you have somebody in your life that loves you and they are a support system for you and they believe in you and you have submitted to be accountable and they bring correction to you they talk to you it's because they love you yes. Yes. he told me early on in our relationship he said if you will trust me that I want what's best for you and I will never just rail on you but if I talk to you it's because I want what's best for you I want you to be the best you can possibly be I want you to be anointed in all that God wants you to be then I will speak the truth to you even though it hurts and I said yes sir and when I did my wife said you don't know what you just opened yourself to <laughs> The wounds hurt sometimes. It was tough. But I trusted him that he loved me. I trusted that he was doing it for my own good. I trusted that I would be a better person by listening to what he had to say and following it. And he proved himself over years and years of being my spiritual father and my mentor. He proved himself. And there were times later on, after I had been under his direction for a long time, he would still say, boy, matter of fact, he got tougher on me the more mature I got. As I look back, I can see early on he was nice to me. He was kind. 
I thought he was mean, but he was, he was kind. And the older I got, the more mature I got, the more wisdom I should have had. He wouldn't cut through any, any he, he didn't sugarcoat it. He just lay it out there. Scripture, Proverbs 15, 32. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves. But the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Did you know that was in the Bible? It's in the Bible. Yet, we, we want to disregard discipline. We want to despise it. We, we don't want to hear when somebody tells us you ought to do this or you ought to do that. We want to say, who you think you are? You're not my mama. You're not my daddy. You'll even tell your mama and daddy that. Who you think you are? I'm grown. It's tough. It's tough to receive correction. It's tough to not give up when I want to quit. Oh, I heard what you said. Somebody said, I don't want to quit. I'm, no, I'm, I'm successful. I'm, look at me. Look what I've done. Uh-huh. Thank God for you. Everybody in this room, everybody watching on the internet right now, everybody that watches TV later, every one of us, there have been moments, tough moments, when you wanted to quit. There have been times I wanted to quit. There's been times she's wanted to quit. There have been times this front row's wanted to quit. There's been times every minister in this place has wanted to quit. There's been times this ministry team, this music team, these band members, every person... There have been tough moments that we have gone through when we wanted to quit. We wanted to stop the world so we could get off because we were going through tough moments. And again, some of you are going through some tough moments right now. And the truth is, there may be somebody in here right now you'd like to quit. You wish I'd quit so you could quit and you could go home ready to quit. It's true. When will he ever shut up? <laughs> I'll curse your watch and your watch will quit. <laughs> it's tough not to give up when you want to quit. And sometimes we have moments that are so tough we want to give up. We feel like nobody understands. It may be because of finances. It may be because of relationship. It may be because of bad health. I don't know what it is, but we all have tough moments. And we try our best and we try to change the circumstances. And it seems like sometimes the more we work, the harder we work, the longer we work, the more we try, the more people we try to get involved to help us, the more counselors we talk to or consultants we talk to, it just gets more and more and more difficult and we can't seem to get where we need to go and we just want to quit. We just want to give up. We just want to throw in the towel. Those are tough Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So the reason we want to quit is because at that moment we're not trusting God. Oh, you missed that. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And if we want to quit, if you find yourself in a situation that's so tough that you want to quit, then you've stopped trusting God at that moment. Because if you trust him, you know everything's going to be all right. If you've trusted God, you know you're going to make it through. If you've trusted God, you know you're going to be healed. You know your finances will be restored. You know relationships will be restored. Wherever you are, if you are trusting God, then you're not worried. But if you're ready to quit, you're worried. You're not trusting God. You've given up. You've lost hope. Your spirit has been broken. He's in the business of restoring that which is broken. You remember the nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And some of you have felt like Humpty Dumpty in your life. There have been times you felt like you were broken and you were ready to give up. 
Nobody understood. You couldn't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You couldn't put the egg back together. You could not fix what was broken. But we serve a God who can. We serve a God that is able to do, the Bible says, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. It may be tough. You may be in a tough moment. You may want to quit. But if you will trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. With men, it is impossible, he said in Mark. But not with God. With God, all things are possible. And then he said, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you the path to take. So trust in the Lord, not your emotions, not your shaky spiritual counselors. Run with who is winning the war. Run with who is winning the war. Run with who's winning the war. Trust in the Lord. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know there are moments you're ready to quit. That's all of us. We've all had some tough times. But I need to tell you today, there is hope. There is hope. Can I share one of my favorite scriptures as we close? I love this verse. In Romans chapter 8. What then, verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Well, let me read it again. If God be for us, Who can be against us? If God be for us, is God for you? If you haven't read this Bible, you need to read it. It'll teach you that God is for you. He sent his son and died on the cross so you could live. He is for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? And if I drop down to verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me translate. I don't care what tough things you're going through. God will get you through. God will see you through. God will help you to be an overcomer. God will give you peace. God will heal your body. He will bring restoration to your finances, to your relationship. God is the miracle worker. He is the wonder worker. He will get you through. Hallelujah. 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 Stand on your feet with me. Lift your hands right now and just tell him that you love him. Just take a few moments. Don't ask him for anything. Just tell him that you love him. Just take a moment and worship him. Just take a moment and bless him. Just praise Him. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your adoration. Father, we thank You that You see us through tough times. We thank You for loving us, for caring for us. We thank You for Your healing power. We thank You for breakthrough power. Lord, we've all faced tough times. We've all wanted to quit. We've all loved somebody that betrayed us, that stopped loving us. We've all had a Judas in our life. We've all had times we didn't understand the storm. We didn't understand the tough moments. There have been times that all we could say, it's tough. With tears in our eyes, with brokenness in our voice, we just, we just cry, we just be broken, just say, it's tough. It's tough right now. Father, I thank you that you take the tough times 
and turn them into tender moments of healing and peace and restoration and joy and strength and love. Thank you, Lord, that you show up and show out when we don't even deserve it, when we haven't been the model Christian, when we've messed up and blown it, you still love us, you still forgive us, you still care. We thank you for that. And today, Lord, we just pray that in the midst of tough moments, you bring healing and hope. If this message has resonated with your spirit, if you're going through some times right now, some moments right now that are tough, that all you can say it's tough, I want to pray for you, for your peace, for your hope, for your strength. If that's you, just step out and walk down here right now. If you're living right now and it's tough, please come down here. If you're living in moments that are defined as tough, come on. Come on, there ought to be 50 people already here. Come on. Come on. Step out. Come on. Maybe you're... Maybe you've just entered into some tough moments. Maybe you're already seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you, you, you're seeing your way out, but you're still in some tough moments. He wants to bring you out today. He wants to bring healing today. He wants to give you clear direction today. Come on, come on, come on, please. Come on, step out. Don't wait. Wait, don't wait. Come on, right now. Maybe there are physical moments that are tough. Maybe you got a bad diagnosis. Maybe your job is uncertain. Maybe your finances are uncertain. Maybe your relationship is uncertain. The miracle worker is here. The healer is here. The one that gives peace, that passes all understanding, he's here right now. Come on, step out. I'm, I'm waiting on somebody. Come on. Come on, come on, please. Come on, right now. You've been in some tough moments. You're facing tough times right now. God wants to heal that hurt. Are you coming? Is this everybody? All the rest of you on the mountaintop, right? Everything's good. Just begin to praise Him right now. Just begin to praise Him. Just begin to praise Him. The soothing power of the Holy Ghost is about to touch us. We prayed in here this week for this service, for you. And the Holy Ghost is here. Oh, yes. Come on, just begin to praise Him. The words of this song are a declaration of where you are right now. In the past tense, it's happening right now. It's done. It's done. It's done. Come on, keep praising Him. Don't ask Him for anything. Just praise Him. Just bless Him. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Peace. That's what Jesus offers. That's what, he, that's what He's offering right now. Joy, peace, grace, and favor. Right now is the moment. He's here. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. I have waited oh, yes, yes. Come on, everybody praise him. Everybody bless him. Let's, let's fill this place with praise. Let's bless him. Let's praise him for the miracle power, the healing power, the delivering power. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. 
came and changed me. I won't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. All my shame, all my shame, all my shame, and my guilt, all my guilt, all my sin. They're forgiven. If you need to repent of your sins, do it right now. My past is over. My past. It's behind me. It's over. Oh, yes, Lord, we invoke your blessing. We invoke your anointing. We pray for your power. We pray for deliverance. We pray for healing. We pray for breakthrough. We pray right now in Jesus' name. We've waited for this moment, Lord. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Before we pray, I need to tell you, God can bring, let me just make it simple, God can fix anything, okay? Maybe you hadn't come down here yet because you're thinking, well, you don't know what, I've, what I'm dealing with. You don't know my tough moments. You, if you knew that, you, you wouldn't, no. God can fix anything anything I have seen some situations some scenarios that were so broke you think there's no hope but no God can fix anything physical, spiritual financial, emotional relational there's no category that God can't fix there's no situation in any category that God can't take care of. There, there's not one. There's not one. So I don't know what you're dealing with. Those of you that have come, you've done the right thing. You've stepped out in faith. You've taken the first step. And we're going to pray with you in just a moment. And here's the simple thing. If you can believe, all things are possible if you'll only believe. All you've got to do is believe God. Right here just believe him if you can believe he said all things are possible if you'll only believe he even said that we could speak to the mountain and say to the mountain be moved and be cast into the sea and if you say it and you believe it with your heart and you do not doubt the mountain's got to go so he can fix anything does that make sense I want us to pray this prayer together before I pray for you. Say, Jesus, Jesus, it's me. I believe your word and I'm coming in faith today. Forgive me for all of my sins. Forgive me now. Cleanse my heart, my mind. Sanctify me fresh. Come into my heart fresh. Baptize me with your power. With your Holy Ghost, I want all you have. And Jesus, I forgive everybody that has offended me or hurt me. I release everybody that has offended me. I release them. I put them in your hands. And today, I'm letting it go. And I'm trusting you to take care of me. I worship you. I bless your name. And I receive a miracle according to my situation. 
I receive it today in the name of Jesus. I'm not going back. I won't go back. I can't go back. I receive joy. I receive peace. I receive hope. I receive restoration. I receive resources. I receive all that you have for me. I receive healing in my body, mind and soul in Jesus name. And I give you praise. Now begin to praise him all over this altar. Begin to thank him right now. And I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus name. In Jesus name.